Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a brainstorming diagram in Visio 2010. Now some people would also consider this as a mind map and eventually maybe a process map. So let's see how we can create one. So all we need to do is go into Visio, into the backstage view, I'll go click new and it'll give me my recently used templates here. I've got the brainstorming diagram here but it also is in this category, the business category. If I click on that and you'll see the brainstorming diagram there. I can just go ahead and double click that and it's going to bring me up the template, the brainstorming shapes stencil where I can start adding shapes in there. Now the main topic is usually just your initial topic that you want to add in there. So let's say that we want to do development. Let's say we want to do an iPhone app. So I, I need to do is just click in there and start, and start typing to enter the text there. You can also press F2 or double click it to see that it's selected it but for the most part you can just start typing. So I'm going to type iPhone app and I've got my main topic there. Maybe now I want to add some subtopics here. I can probably just take this stencil and bring it over here. It's going to bring up an add multiple topics window so I can start putting some things in there. So I think with iPhone app you can say well we did, we're going to do design then we're going to do development and then we're going to test. So if I click OK, it's going to enter those topics in there. Let me go ahead and move this a little bit. Whoops, let me move this over here. Actually, let me do a Shift Control. Let me select this area to zoom into it a little bit. All right, that's a little bit better now. And so once we created that, now we've got to connect it together. So I can have these connectors actually connect them together. And you can see that I'm going to connect these together. So they fit right. So in Visio there's actually a there's two concepts to the connectors. There's a point to point connection and there's a shape to shape connection. So if you click on this you'll notice that the dots here are a red square, that's a red square, that's a red square. These are shape to shape connections. And the way that you can tell is like if you move it around so if I move it around you see that these connectors they will move accordingly. So Visio will kind of try to pick the best uh, connection point. And that's a shape to shape connection. Now with a point to point connection, if I move this over here to this point, not in here, you can see that the red box is covering this particular shape. And if I move it over to this connection point, that means it's a point to point connection. If I move this around over here, that connection point stays the same. It's not going to move anywhere else. So if I move this over here, you'll notice that that kind of stayed there and it's kind of an awkward type of connection. So for the most part, you want a shape to shape connection and that would make it easier for you to kind of move things around and not have the lines kind of go all over the place. Now you also notice that you can actually move some of the curvature of these lines. So I move this here and move these here. So if you want to get really fancy that's something that you can do. It's probably not a good idea in terms of trying to make it look neat. Let me make this back into a point a shape to shape connection. Let me move this over here and then we can see now that We've got our we've got our initial subtopics. Now that's one way to create a subtopic is using the stencils here. Now there's another way to actually there's a couple ways to actually do that. Let me go ahead and just select these. Let me do a shift, select that, and select that, and just press delete. All right, and then I've got my main topic here. The other way to to create it instead of using the shapes, you can also go up here to the brainstorming menu and add multiple subtopics, or you can right click and they can also add multiple subtopics here right and so you can have the same window clicking that will do the same thing so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this again design development and test and when we do it like this instead of adding it from here what happens is it automatically adds the connectors already so that's kinda nice so instead of a uh, pulling it over here this probably is a preferable one if you have kind of got some ideas around it already so let me go ahead and fit page to view now there's another area where you can also enter it and that's also down here in the outline window so let's say that I'm gonna start entering task so let's say design let me add some multiple subtopics here that's got task 1 and then task 2 click OK you can see it's added to here it's also added here and let's say development let me go and right click and add multiple subtopics uh, let's see task 1 task 2 task Three. Maybe there's three tasks there. And then for test, I'm going to right click, add multiple subtopics, task one, 
10 tasks to maybe just two tasks there. So that's another way you can add additional shapes into the brainstorming diagram. So let's say we have these particular shapes and maybe we don't like this style. There's actually several other styles that we can use. It's not a whole lot, but we can adjust some styles and you can go up under the brainstorming tab and click on style. We see we have this default style, which is this simple. There's also this billow style, which has these clouds that look kind of silly, but uh, that's the style that's available. There's a boxy style, uh, very, that's a little bit more business oriented. There's an elliptical style, which can also be uh, a little professional. And you have this mosaic style, which kind of mixes it up a little bit. And this other one, which does the same here. And this starburst one, which is probably a little, a little fun or funny, but if you want to stay professional, probably the boxy or elliptical will probably do. I'm going to go ahead and go with boxy and click OK. And you can see now it's kind of created this little boxy shape with these curved lines. You can also see that um, it, it's kind of cleaned up a little bit. But if we wanted to have Visio kind of do some auto arrangement, you can also click the auto arrange here. And it's going to clean up a little bit more. So it did that. And let me go ahead and move this over here you can see that it's kind of formed up a little bit more nicely now. Uh, so auto range will help you out if you have started to move things around a lot and it can make it a little bit more neater for you. So there's another feature where you can start to lay out things a little bit different. You can see that this is in the center and we, it kind of branches out like a hub and spoke. Now if we decide to take this from brainstorming mode into more of a process or some kind of hierarchy, we can actually go to the layout command here and click on that. It gives us this different layouts. So we can select the layout. Right now it's at the default where it kind of send it's kind of like a hub and spoke, but we can go from left to right or right to left or top to bottom or bottom to top. I kind of like top to bottom. See it sees more as a hierarchy and we're starting a business process flow maybe from the top down. And you can have these curved connectors or you can have straight connectors. So uh, I'm going to go with the straight connectors right now and click OK. And you can see now it's getting to be a little bit more like a, a hierarchy, maybe more like a work breakdown structure. If you know uh, work, break, or work breakdown structures or WBSs in project management, it's starting to look like that uh, because this is basically a process. So that's another kind of neat arrangement feature you can use is the layout. And if you still move things around, you can click Auto Arrange to have it arrange it for you to make it look a little bit more neater. Now let's say that we want to do some organization. We have some tasks here. Maybe development didn't have three three tasks; it only had two tasks. So we can actually, if you think, well, maybe I, maybe I can move this over here. Um, well, it's not really that simple. It's a little a little more difficult. You probably have to delete that, delete the connector, and then add the subtask here. But actually there's an easier way to do that if we go into the outline window. If you don't have this available, just click on the outline window check mark here. We can actually move it here. So what we can do is if we're trying to move task three into design, we can just click that and kind of move it up here. And we can see now that's part of task three. Now let me go ahead and close this. This is kind of in the way. And what you can do now, it's kind of moved it over here, but you can click auto arrange and it's going to kind of arrange it more neatly now. And so that's kind of the nice thing about having the outline window available is that it kind of makes things a little bit more easy for you to move around and adjust. One also neat thing about having it doing it here and then eventually having it done in a flow, if we have design come first, development come second, test come third, we can actually export this into Excel and it becomes a work breakdown structure that's numbered out and then we can put that into Microsoft Project. So if I click on export data and we go into exporting it to Excel, so it's going to ask me to save this file so I can just go ahead and save it in any directory or folder, click save and it's going to open up an Excel document. And if you've noticed here, it has actually created an Excel document and for each, for the main topic, it has iPhone app, let me go and double click that to auto fit it. It's got the different subtopics. You see design, you see development, you see test, and it's also numbered them. See design is 1.1, development is 1.2, test is 1.3, and it's got sub numbering below it for each of the tasks or e each of the different sub processes. So this is kind of nice if you created a 
you started out with a brainstorm, you turn it into a process map, and it kind of turns into a work breakdown structure. You can actually export it into Excel and then put it into Microsoft Project. So, and that's one neat thing about doing it this way is creating a brainstorm diagram and then putting, making it into a work breakdown structure and eventually it can go into Microsoft Project. So let's go back into Visio. So we're back into Visio and that's basically an introduction into the brainstorming diagram or mind mapping uh, using Visio 2010. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.